Hi, I'd like to show you my new metronome. You can control the speed. Which sound it makes. And which visualization you want to have. So here's with no visualization, which might be best for uh, mobile devices because it probably uh, uses the battery. And this, and this one. And then stop and start. Okay, let's see how this works. This is a web app, obviously. There's a single web page. This is it, this index.html. And what are the interesting things in it? It uses Bootstrap for the appearance of the font and these user interface controls. And it uses P5.js for the animation. And it uses the web audio API for the sound. These form groups make these groups here on the page. And there's some uh, JavaScript here when things change, when the tempo changes. We call a method of metronome app. And the same thing for when the sound changes, we call a different method. And the same for visualization, we call a third method. And then um, for the start stop button, we call this method. And metronome app is uh, created down here. Uh, this is the metronome app, and this is the sound part of it, and this is the visualization part of it. So let's look at these three in turn. Here is the metronome app, and it's a class. And when you create one, you give it up to these six uh, parameters. And let's look at how we create it um, down here. So we have a constant metronome map, and we create a new metronome map, and we give it a string, which is the path where to find the sounds, and then an array of the names of the sound files. I'll show you these sound files. They are, they're in the assets audio directory and they're wave files. And in Audacity, they look like this. Here's the high wood block. They're very short. Here's the claves and the high bongo. Uh, I'll just point out some things in here. The metronome app creates a metronome sound, which produces all the sound. And then here, it fills in the names of the sounds. This is built dynamically from this code with this appending options to the select element. Um, so here's the select element. You can see it's empty and this code fills it in by appending option elements to it. And the same kind of thing happens for the visualizations. Okay, that's just a quick look at the constructor. And then you saw that there are four methods of this that get called from the web page here. Set tempo, set sound, and so on. And here they are. And for the tempo and the sound, those requests, those changes are just passed on to the um, metronome sound object. And for the visualization, that's passed on to, uh, it's actually stored in an object with settings for the visualization. And then the toggle starts the sound playing or turns it off and then changes the text 
from start to stop and vice versa. Okay, let's look next at metronome sound. Here it is, it's a class, here's the constructor. It needs to know where the sounds are, what the sounds are, the names of the files. And then this listener, which is kind of like a callback, so the metronome, which has very precise timing, calls this back at key points so that the visualizer can keep um, in place with it. Here we set the tempo, here we set the sound, and then uh, toggle is where most everything happens. And toggle calls play metronome if we're turning it on. Otherwise, it stops the sound. And play metronome does this. First, it finds out um, with very fine resolution what the time value is from the audio context. And um, so I should say that we create the audio context, context up here in the constructor. And you can read about the web audio API to learn about the audio context. But it has a method um, or a property called current time that has the current time. So um, this is when we start. And then we call schedule, which is here. Then we have this flag, the Boolean, running, telling whether we're running or not. And if we're not, then we stop before doing anything. Uh, and then I mentioned this listener that allows the metronome and its precise timing to communicate to the visualizer. Well, this is where it sets the time of, the, of when it's supposed to start, and then also the tempo. And the sound number comes in as numbers starting at one, and we have a buffer of sounds that are indexed by zero, so we subtract one from the first to get this. And um, if the sound files aren't loaded, we put out an alert to that effect. That shouldn't happen, and I think there's a better way to not even present the user interface until all the sounds are loaded. Uh, if we do have the sound files and the tempo is not zero, then we can make, we can schedule the sound to play. And we um, take the tempo, which is in beats per minute, we divide that into 60, which is the number of seconds in a minute. And that gives us the number of seconds, which is a, probably a fraction of a second, uh, when we should start the sound. And then we create a buffer source, um, which is a way to play WAV files. And then we point that buffer source's buffer to our buffer corresponding to the sound that's chosen. And then we connect that sound source to the destination so that we can hear it. And then we say, once the sound is finished playing, and remember, these are very short sounds, so that happens very soon after they play. Um, once that happens, then we call schedule again so that we can schedule the next sound. So there's only one scheduled at a time, and it's very precise. And then here we create an instance of the sound files class, and that's down here at the bottom of this file. And um, this takes the context. What's the context? The audio context. And then a list of URLs. And it starts off with an empty array of buffers. And then it goes through the URL list. And for each one, it makes an XML HTTP request to fetch the data. And then when the data comes back, then we decode it. And 
stored in one of the buffers. These happen asynchronously. So the five requests or six, whatever it is, will go out pretty quickly. And then as they come back, the buffer will fill. And eventually we have a buffer with one, uh, this buffer array with one buffer for each of the sound types. All right, what's left? The visualization. And the visualization, as I mentioned, is all done with P5JS. You can go to p5js.org and learn about that. And P5JS programs usually have a setup and a draw method, and that's where they do um, their work. And I've wrapped the settings for the visualization in this JavaScript object here. And the, in the setup, we create the canvas um, to fill its parent, which is the visualization, the um, div with the idea of visualization. Let's go back to here. Uh, so that's this div. This div over here. Then we set the color mode to hue, saturation, and brightness because um, as we go through here, in this visualization, what changes as it goes around is the brightness. The hue stays the same, saturation stays the same. So that's a convenient color model to use. Okay, what happens in draw? Well, what do we need to know to draw this visualization, for instance? We need to know um, what fraction of the way through we are between this beat and the next beat. Um, so we calculate that here with this function. And margin, radius, and diameter are used in the geometry of the drawing. And then we kind of uh, clear the screen to white. Then we have a function that draws this large circle. And then we have three visualizations in this array. The first one, so this is an array from here to here, and it consists of uh, one, two, three functions. So this is a function with no um, parameters that does nothing. So this, is, this corresponds to the, uh, the none choice here. And then this one corresponds to the spinning circle. So the function starts here and goes down to here. And so this function consists of two other functions plus calls to three functions. So this draws the large circle and then draws the spoke, which is this part, and then draws the small circle, which is this part. And the final function just draws the circle. It doesn't do the, the spoke or the small circle. And um, so we've created our array of visualization functions. And then here we call one of them based on the visualization type number that's set. Now I see I don't need these parentheses here. You can find the code github.com DC Brichetti and it has a repository called metronome maybe uh, someone would like to create a new visualization for the metronome you could make a pull request on github okay see you next time